for you. Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I offer a method and a challenge. The method will show you the way to brew an American Imperial Stout with a single mash just using grain. Absolutely no sugars or extracts at all. The output volume will be 19 litres or 5 US liquid gallons, but depending on your setup this can be modified. I have used the 40 litre brew tool system, but I dare say that this will work with many other brewing systems or methods. Do note that this will be a challenge, but I have faith in my process and your ability to follow it. So let's get to it. My recipe involves quite a large variety of different types of grain, which will be explained in a future video where I will also go into the style, recipe writing and the final beer's tasting notes in my usual format. This recipe will produce a very flavourful and rich Imperial American stout. As I hope you have already noticed, the base recipe is shown on screen and is also found within this video's description along with a link to the recipe on Brewfather. Within my brew here there is actually 8.61 kilos or almost 19 pounds of grain involved in total. You are going to need to mill this pretty finely to hit your goal, which is of course part of the challenge here along with a little bit of rye just to keep things even more interesting. Being a stout there are not masses of hops to worry about, but by the time you hit the boil on this one most of your worries will be over anyway. When it came to water volumes my goal was to follow Brewfather's suggestions as much as I could, which at that point meant a small sparge of just 3 litres. Here is a look at mash in, you can see that the grain is pretty smashed for this one and I used rice holes in layers periodically as I gradually added the grain and stirred it in. Things are quite liquid at this point but later on I realised by adding more grain that the only way to proceed on this one was to add in half of the 3 litre sparge water to float this mash. Losing half of an already small sparge was something I hoped to avoid, but unfortunately it was unavoidable. The grain you use may well be different, it is simply down to the grain's absorption. Feel free to add the grain and pause for shrinkage, I did this halfway through to maximise the capacity. Here is how things looked once all was mashed in and before starting the mash timer and pump. A pretty full basket and we're going to need that extra room as you will see. Because this is a very fine crane crush you cannot expect your brewing system to handle it on its own. You are going to need to control things yourself and further actions will also be needed. Firstly you will need to see what sort of recirculation you will be able to use without having too much overflow over the sides of your grain basket. It is of course inevitable that your grain basket will overflow with this sort of grain crush, but that is perfectly fine as long as we manage it via control of the pump speed. On the brutal systems you can do this via the touchscreen with percentage control. Here I am at 14% shown at the bottom of the display, but with other brewing systems like Brewzilla, Grainfather and so on you can use the valve on the recirculation pipe instead. The next thing is that to maximise you are going to need to give the grain a good stir at least four times during your one hour mash time. Be sure to do this because otherwise your efficiency will fall short and we need to maximise here for this to actually work. Naturally if this is all too much for you then no problem. Simply split the mash into two parts and use the reiterated mash technique that I shared on my channel over two years ago. It was made with Grainfather in mind but the techniques can be applied to other brewing systems of course. Now you're going to note that I started doing this very carefully. The first part is to break up the grain and then some more general stirring is being used. I am being careful as I want to avoid much grain going over the sides of the basket. It is inevitable that some will. This is something that we will correct later and it is certainly nothing to stress over. Just try to minimise it to avoid more work later on is all. Make sure that when you do this that you have made contact with every part of the grain. Work systematically and you will maximise. Once the grain is broken up then a general stirring action is then to be used. The total process time here is going to be about 5 minutes, but going longer may pay greater efficiency dividends depending on how good your technique is. Once you are at the boil stage do not worry if it looks a little crazy like this does. It is simply protein and protein that you would be a little crazy also to remove from a dark style like this one, so I strongly suggest that you stir this in even if you usually skim the protein. Also it's not like you need to worry about clarity in a stout after all. Stirring this in will take a while, so I've sped up the video to make my next point. 
So now you're going to see some of the grain that actually got spilt over the sides because of the way this method works. Do not panic over this, no harm will be done if you are using modern malt with its super modifications. In fact many commercial breweries add boiling water to grain during mashing which is called naturally. You will not get any astringency, but I am going to remove it because I don't want it in my fermenter or within the boil any longer than necessary. I am using a tea strainer here to remove this grain, but many other items will do, including a hop spider in fact, which is actually probably more useful when used in this way. You may notice in the early stages of the boil that more of the grain comes to the surface. Don't worry, just remove it. Everything else is business as usual and it wasn't long before I was cooling the wort and adding it to my fermenter. I went pretty hot on this for pitching as I'm using Vosk Fake. These higher temperatures really work out well at first to springing a fast fermentation start. Here is the starting gravity if you can excuse the dirty screen. Just a few points under the target but nothing I'm bothered by. This one started fermentation within a couple of hours. A few hours later and I was off to bed and it was already well underway at 1.064. By the next morning it was at 1.035 and the morning after that it had reached 1.010 which is actually one point lower than predicted in Brewfather and where it stayed. So in actual fact because of this I was only two gravity points short to where I hoped this would be. So really there are various challenges here. Can you brew efficiently like this? And if so can you beat my score? Go for it. If you would like to join this YouTube channel's Facebook group, then please do so by using the link shown on screen. We have over 7,000 members and the group is busy with friendly and helpful like-minded brewers of all levels of experience. Please do be aware that we have a strict code of conduct, so if you cannot be mature and nice, then this is probably not a group for you. This now brings this video to a close. If you have any questions, then please let me know via YouTube or Facebook. I do hope that you found this video to be useful, interesting and enjoyable. If appropriate, then please like this video on YouTube, and if you've not done so already, then please subscribe. I regularly post new content. Happy brewing!